The small intestine is a really important meridian because it's how we absorb our nutrients from our food and it is essentially here in our core. When we look at it from a meridian energetic perspective, um, it, in the five element model, the small intestine is the, the yang, the, the husband of the heart meridian. And in Chinese medicine, the equivalent of a broken heart is a broken intestines. So it's, it is absolutely at the core of us. And interestingly, the meridian also works with the pituitary gland, which is the master gland in the endocrine system, which is a very important system that we work with in functional kinesiology and it regulates growth. And so this absorbing nutrients from our food is all going towards us growing as individuals from a physical, but also an emotional perspective. So when the small intestine meridian is imbalanced, we often see digestive symptoms. So let's have a look um, at what the small intestine actually does from an anatomical perspective. It, so when we, when we think about digestion, we've got the, the mouth which chews the food, then it comes down the esophagus and into the stomach. The stomach is actually here. It's underneath our rib cage on the left-hand side. And the stomach uh, begins to break that food down with um, acid and enzymes, and then it comes into the small intestine. And the small intestine is above our belly button. And then as the small intestine comes to an end, there is a junction point that connects it to the large intestine. Um, and the way we like to think about it is it's the door between the kitchen and the bathroom. So if our small intestine is the kitchen, the large intestine is the bathroom. And so our food, the small intestine takes all the nutrition from our food and then this chime, this um, mushed up food becomes waste that goes into the large intestine. And that ileocecal valve, that junction point is an important valve that we work with as functional kinesiologists. So there are three parts of the small intestine and each of them have a, a different role in terms of absorbing our food. Uh, and, and the different kinds of uh, nutrients that, um, that the small intestine absorbs. So the muscles that are involved, that are connected into the small intestine from a kinesiology perspective are the quadriceps, which are the big old muscles on the front of our thighs and the abdominals. And we're talking about the rectus, which is the central uh, abdominal muscle in our core. We've got the obliques, which is our side muscles, and we've got the transverse, which are also on the side. So all found in the trunk of the body. And when we're looking at imbalances in a small intestine meridian, there we are looking at um, digestive issues. We're looking at things like diarrhea, constipation, bloating, malabsorption, uh, losing a lot of weight. Uh, and then there's also autoimmune conditions that affect the small intestine, such as Crohn's or celiac disease. So celiac disease is an allergy to the gluten protein. Um, irritable bowel syndrome is also um, recognized as a small intestine condition. So there's some amazing new research that's coming through that is showing that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is a bacteria that is overgrowing in the small intestine and causing symptoms like diarrhea, constipation, bloating. 95% of those who were suffering with irritable bowel syndrome appeared to have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So we're starting to really understand IBS from a different perspective that there's actually a bacterial imbalance in the small intestine that needs to be addressed. So how do we as kinesiologists balance the small intestine meridians? And we use the bees, we use biochemical, emotional, electrical and structural. It's what is so wonderful about being a functional kinesiologist is that we've got this toolbox of different techniques that we use. From a biochemical perspective, we absolutely look at food and we look at eliminating food intolerances and anti-nutrients, some of the common ones, wheat, milk, processed foods, for example. But if someone has an autoimmune condition, celiacs, Crohn's, colitis, then we would be looking at taking the food intolerances, the food allergies further um, and um, developing more uh, tailored diet solutions for those with small intestinal um, imbalances. 
Uh, we're also looking at making sure that there's um, high nutrition going in, so fiber from vegetables. If there is a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, this is uh, part of a plan that you would need to introduce those um, healthy fibers at a later stage because they can be really um, irritating for a bowel that has small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So there is a, a plan that we work with uh, in practitioner training that looks at dealing with the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and then developing more of a, a change in diet as the small intestine begins to balance. We also need healthy fats. So this is a big, um, we look at the macronutrients, we look at protein, fats and carbohydrates and these balance of how important this is for our absor absorption and our nutrient intake. Drinking water is very important for the digestive system as well. When we're looking at supplements from a practitioner level, so if you're studying at the foundation level, then you're gonna be looking at food, and um, food intolerance testing and recommending the macronutrients in the balance. As you get into the practitioner training, you can work more with supplements. So we use digestive aids, such as digestive enzymes, acid, betaine, hydrochloride, for example. We also uh, work with digestive herbs, such as berberin and oregano, especially if there is a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth suspected. Uh, and we've got kinesiology tests that we can work with. We also work with lab tests if we wanna take that, that further. Good old magnesium. Magnesium is great at relaxing the bowel. If there is uh, issues around diarrhea or constipation, magnesium can be an absolute support for that. We also work with um, a product called Gut Iron, which contains terahydrate, which is all about gut repair, as well as our glutamine, which is a amino acid, which is also important for gut repair. But when we're looking at the small intestine, we have a program where if there is this imbalance, we take it through a process where gut healing is the last piece of the process. We've got to do the gut, uh, gut repair, the gut environment, first um, with food and supplements and then we work into more of a gut healing perspective so that is all part of the practitioner training that we do emotionally uh, the small intestine in the traditional chinese medicine model of the five element the small intestine belongs to the fire element and the emotion is sadness and joy so when there is an imbalance particularly the small intestine because of this abdominal connection there tends to be a lack of strength here there seems to be like a collapse and a lack of of, of belief in self can be very small intestine uh, a lack of love for self a lack of joy for self and increased sadness. So from an emotional perspective, we ask questions around uh, joy in life, creating joy in life, creating joy in self, and also exploring and examining what uh, is, is causing sadness in someone's life. Electrical balancing, the small intestine, the, the optimum time is lunchtime. That absolutely makes sense. And what we see is someone who has a small intestinal meridian imbalance in this area will often get indigestion around lunchtime or will have an increased appetite that seems excessive or has no appetite at all. So those are kind of some of the clues that we look for in a meridian imbalance with the small intestine. So looking at the small intestine meridian, uh, it starts on the little finger, goes up the outside of the arm because it is a yang um, meridian. So it is on the outside of the body. Yin meridians are on the inside of the body. And this is something we explore in the foundation training in greater depth. It goes on the outside of the body and then up through to the cheek and then back to the ear. Structurally, the small intestine is connected to the muscles of the legs because of these quadriceps and it's to do with our core. So when there is a structural imbalance, then we tend to get this curved back and this beer belly look. Um, and also with the thighs, we can get very tight extended hamstrings. So those are, when you're, when you're working with posture and you're seeing this in your client, then you can suspect that there may be something going on with the digestion. It's one of the reasons I love kinesiology is that you can see from a structural perspective. So the posture, if you've got that protruding belly, then that is, it's a, an, an insight into, okay, what is going on with the digestion? I'm going to explore the digestion here. 
There is also a connection with the abdominals and the sagittal suture, which is the your hairline at the top of your skull. And so we as kinesiologists, we work massaging um, this 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 area which can help switch on the abdominals which isn't exciting if you're doing um abdominal work if you're doing sit-ups for example if you massage this sagittal suture area then you can actually switch on and and, and support your core and it will make sit-ups easier it's nice little tip for you so how we work with the triangle of hormonal health as part of functional kinesiology and how does the small intestine fit with this well the the triangle is based on blood sugars so the spleen meridian the um triple warmer meridian for stress and the circulation sex for um uh for estrogen progesterone and testosterone so working with this triangle and when this triangle is out of balance so for example if we have imbalanced blood sugars then this has an effect on the vagus nerve another thing that we explore in the practitioner training which is involved in the digestive process so we no longer are able to fully process and assimilate our food correctly if we've got imbalanced blood sugar levels and it's the same with cortisol if there's high levels of stress then the body redirects energy towards the endocrine system and moves it away from the digestive process so dealing with stress and imbalanced blood sugars is really important. And from a estrogen, progesterone, testosterone perspective, these hormones are closely related to the, the mucus in the gut and the gut barrier. And so when we've got imbalanced levels of this estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, then we also see a knock-on effect with the mucus in the gut. And so then this barrier becomes weakened and then we start to see um, inflammatory conditions of the gut. So it is really important when we see someone who's got a small intestinal meridian imbalances that we are working with this triangle, making sure that this is balanced so that the small intestine does not become a victim of the, the hormone imbalance. And that is the small intestine meridian.